CQ, CQ. This is W9GFO. Is anybody out there? Don't you know people need to see what I've seen? They need to see. This is the way it's been done for billions of years. Small moves are. Section 1 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Bob Neufeld. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Wolf and the Kid. There was once a little kid whose growing horns made him think he was a grown-up billy goat and able to take care of himself. So one evening, when the flock started home from the pasture and his mother called, the kid paid no heed and kept right on nibbling the tender grass. A little later, when he lifted his head, the flock was gone. He was all alone, the sun was sinking, long shadows came creeping over the ground. A chilly little wind came creeping with them, making scary noises in the grass. The kid shivered as he thought of the terrible wolf. Then he started wildly over the field, bleating for his mother. But not halfway, near a clump of trees, there was the wolf. The kid knew there was little hope for him. "'Please, Mr. Wolf,' he said, trembling. I know you are going to eat me, but first please pipe me a tune, for I want to dance and be merry as long as I can. The wolf liked the idea of a little music before eating, so he struck up a merry tune, and the kid leaped and frisked gaily. Meanwhile the flock was moving slowly homeward. In the still evening air the wolf's piping carried far. The shepherd dogs pricked up their ears. They recognized the song the wolf sings before a feast, and in a moment they were racing back to the pasture. The wolf's song ended suddenly, and as he ran with the dogs at his heels, he called himself a fool for turning piper to please a kid when he should have stuck to his butcher's trade. Do not let anything turn you from your purpose. The Tortoise and the Ducks The tortoise, you know, carries his house on his back. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot leave home. They say that Jupiter punished him so because he was such a lazy stay-at-home that he would not go to Jupiter's wedding, even when especially invited. After many years, Tortoise began to wish he had gone to that wedding. When he saw how gaily the birds flew about, and how the hare and the chipmunk and all the other animals ran nimbly by, always eager to see everything there was to be seen, the Tortoise felt very sad and discontented. He wanted to see the world, too, and there he was with a house on his back, and little short legs that would hardly drag him along. One day he met a pair of ducks and told them all his trouble. "'We can help you see the world,' said the ducks. "'Take hold of this stick with your teeth, and we will carry you far up in the air where you can see the whole countryside. But keep quiet, or you will be sorry.' The tortoise was very glad indeed. He seized the stick firmly with his teeth. The two ducks took hold of it, one at each end and away they sailed up toward the clouds. Just then a crow flew by. He was very much astonished at the strange sight, and cried, This must be surely the king of tortoises. Why, certainly, began the tortoise. But as he opened his mouth to say these foolish words, he lost his hold on the stick, and down he fell to the ground, where he was dashed to pieces on a rock. Foolish curiosity and vanity often lead to misfortune. The young crab and his mother. 
why in the world do you walk sideways like that said a mother crab to her son you should always walk straight forward with your toes turned out show me how to walk mother dear answered the little crab obediently i want to learn so the old crab tried and tried to walk straight forward but she could walk sideways only like her son and when she wanted to turn her toes out she tripped and fell on her nose do not tell others how to act unless you can set a good example the frogs and the ox an ox came down to a reedy pool to drink as he splashed heavily into the water he crushed a young frog into the mud the old frog soon missed the little one and asked his brothers and sisters what had become of him a great big monster said one of them stepped on little brother with one of his huge feet big was he said the old frog puffing herself up was he as big as this oh much bigger they cried the frog puffed up still more oh, he could not have been bigger than this she said but the little frogs all declared that the monster was much much bigger and the old frog kept puffing herself out more and more until all at once she burst do not attempt the impossible recording by hallie kill the aesop for children by aesop the dog the cock and the fox a dog and a cock who were the best of friends wished very much to see something of the world so they decided to leave the farmyard and to set out into the world along the road that led to the woods the two comrades traveled along in the very best of spirits and without meeting any adventure to speak of at nightfall the cock looking for a place to roost as was his custom spied nearby a hollow tree that he thought would do very nicely for a night's lodging the dog could creep inside and the cock would fly up on one of the branches so said so done and both slept very comfortably with the first glimmer of dawn the cock awoke for the moment he forgot just where he was he thought he was still in the farmyard where it had been his duty to arouse the household at daybreak so standing on his tiptoes he flapped his wings and crowed lustily but instead of awakening the farmer he awakened a fox not far off in the wood the fox immediately had rosy visions of a delicious breakfast Hurrying to the tree where the cock was roosting, he said very politely, A hearty welcome to our woods, honored sir. I cannot tell you how glad I am to see you here. I am quite sure we shall become the closest of friends. I feel highly flattered, kind sir, replied the cock slyly. If you will please go round the corner to the door of my house, and at the foot of the tree my porter will let you in. The hungry but unsuspecting fox went around the tree as he was told, and in a twinkling the dog had seized him. Those who try to deceive may expect to be paid in their own coin. Belling the Cat The mice once called a meeting to decide on a plan to free themselves of their enemy, the cat. At least they wished to find some way of knowing when she was coming, so they might have time to run away. Indeed, something had to be done, for they lived in such constant fear of her claws that they had hardly dared stir from their dens by night or day. Many plans were discussed, but none of them was thought good enough. At last a very young mouse got up and said, I have a plan that seems very simple, but I know it will be successful. All we have to do is hang a bell around the cat's neck. When we hear the bell ringing, we will know immediately that our enemy is coming. All the mice were much surprised that they had not thought of such a plan before. But in the midst of rejoicing over their good fortune, an old mouse arose and said, I will say that the plan of the young mouse is very good, but let me ask one question. Who will bell the cat? It is one thing to say that something should be done, but quite different to do it. The Eagle and the Jackdaw An eagle swooping down on powerful wings, seized a lamb in her talons and made off with it to her nest. A jackdaw saw the deed and his silly head was filled with the idea that he was big and strong enough to do it as the eagle had done. So with much rustling of feathers and a fierce air, he came down swiftly on the back of a large ram. 
But when he tried to rise again, he found that he could not get away, for his claws were tangled in the wool. And so far was he from carrying away the ram that the ram hardly noticed he was there. The shepherd saw the fluttering jackdaw and at once guessed what had happened. Running up, he caught the bird and clipped its wings. That evening, he gave the jackdaw to his children. What a funny bird this is, they laughed. What do you call it, father? This is a jackdaw, my children. But if you should ask him, he would say he is an eagle. Do not let your vanity make you overestimate your powers. The Boy and the Filberts A boy was given permission to put his hand into a pitcher to get some filberts. But he took such a great fistful that he could not draw his hand out again. There he stood, unwilling to give up a single filbert and yet unable to get them all out at once. Vexed and disappointed, he began to cry. My boy, said his mother, be satisfied with half the nuts you have taken and you will easily get your hand out. Then perhaps you may have some more filbert some other time. Do not attempt too much at once. Recording by Francis Brown. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. Hercules and the Wagoner. A farmer was driving his wagon along a miry country road after a heavy rain. The horses could hardly drag the load through the deep mud and at last came to a standstill when one of the wheels sank hub deep in a rut. The farmer climbed down from his seat and stood beside the wagon looking at it, but without making the least effort to get it out of the rut. All he did was to curse his bad luck and call loudly on Hercules to come to his aid. Then, it is said, Hercules really did appear, saying, Put your shoulder to the wheel, man, and urge on your horses. Do you think you can move the wagon by simply looking at it and whining about it? Ha! Huh. Hercules will not help unless you make some effort yourself. And when the farmer put his shoulder to the wheel and urged his horses, the wagon moved very readily. Soon the farmer was riding along in great content and with a good lesson learned. Self-help is the best help. Heaven helps those who help themselves. The Kid and the Wolf A frisky young kid had been left by the herdsman on a thatched roof of a sheep shelter to keep him out of harm's way. The kid was browsing near the edge of the roof when he spied a wolf and began to jeer at him, making faces and abusing him to his heart's content. I hear you, said the wolf, and I haven't the least grudge against you for what you say or do. When you are up there, it is the roof that's talking, not you. Do not say anything at any time that you would not say at all times. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse A town mouse visited a relative who lived in the country. For lunch, the country mouse served wheat stalks, roots, and acorns with a dash of cold water to drink. For drink, the town mouse ate very sparingly, nibbling a little of this and a little of that, and by her manner making it very plain that she ate the simple food only to be polite. After the meal, the friends had a long talk, or rather, the town mouse talked about her life in the city, while the country mouse listened. Then they went to bed in a cozy nest hedgerow and slept in quiet comfort until morning. In her sleep, the country mouse dreamed she was a town mouse, with all the luxuries and delights of city life that her friend had described for her. So the next day, when the town mouse asked the country mouse to go home with her, she gladly said yes. When they reached the mansion in which the town mouse lived, they found on the tables in the dining rooms the leavings of a very fine banquet. There were sweetmeats and jellies, pastries, delicious cheeses, indeed the most tempting foods that a mouse can imagine. But just as the country mouse was about to nibble a dainty bit of pastry, she heard a cat mew loudly and scratch at the door. In great fear, the mice scurried to a hiding place where they lay quite still for a long time, hardly daring to breathe. When at last they ventured back to the feast, the door opened suddenly, and in came the servants to clear the table, followed by the house dog. The country mouse stopped in the town mouse's den only long enough to pick up her carpet bag and umbrella. You may have luxuries and dainties I have not, 
she said as she hurried away, but I prefer my plain food and simple life in the country with the peace and security that go with it. Poverty with security is better than plenty in the midst of fear and uncertainty. The Fox and the Grapes A fox one day spied a beautiful bunch of ripe grapes hanging from a vine trained along the branches of a tree. The grapes seemed ready to burst with juice and the fox's mouth watered as he gazed longingly at them. The bunch hung from a high branch and the fox had to jump for it. The first time he jumped, he missed it by a long way. So he walked off a short distance and took a running leap at it, only to fall short once more. Again and again he tried, but in vain. Now he sat down and looked at the grapes in disgust. Oh, what a fool I am, he said. Here I am, wearying myself out to get a bunch of sour grapes that are not worth gaping for. And off he walked very very scornfully. There are many who pretend to despise and belittle that which is beyond their reach. Recording by Catalina Watt The Aesop for Children by Aesop The Bundle of Sticks A certain father had a family of sons who were forever quarrelling among themselves. No words he could say did the least good, so he cast about in his mind for some very striking example that should make them see that discord would lead them to misfortune. One day, when the quarrelling had been much more violent than usual, and each of the sons was moping in a surly manner, he asked one of them to bring him a bundle of sticks. Then, handing the bundle to each of his sons in turn, he told them to try and break it. But although each one tried his best, none was able to do so. The father then untied the bundle and gave the sticks to his sons to break one by one. This they did very easily. My son, said the father, do you not see how certain it is that if you agree with each other and help each other, that it will be impossible for your enemies to injure you? But if you are divided among yourselves, you will be no stronger than a single stick in that bundle. In unity is strength. The Wolf and the Crane a wolf had been feasting too greedily, and a bone had stuck crosswise in his throat. He could get it neither up nor down, and of course he could not eat a thing. Naturally, that was an awful state of affairs for a greedy wolf. So away he hurried to the crane. He was sure that she, with her long neck and bill, would easily be able to reach the bone and pull it out. I will reward you very handsomely, said the wolf, if you pull that bone out for me. The crane, as you can imagine, was very uneasy about putting her head in a wolf's throat. But she was grasping in nature, so she did what the wolf asked her to do. When the wolf felt that the bone was gone, he started to walk away. But what about my reward? called the crane anxiously. What? snarled the wolf, whirling around. Haven't you got it? Isn't it enough that I let you take your head out of my mouth without snapping it off? Expect no reward for serving the wicked. The Ass and His Driver An ass was being driven along a road leading down the mountainside, when he suddenly took it into his silly head to choose his own path. He could see his stall at the foot of the mountain, and to him the quickest way down seemed to be over the edge of the nearest cliff. Just as he was about to leap over, his master caught him by the tail and tried to pull him back, but the stubborn ass would not yield and pulled with all his might. Very well, said his master. Go your way, you willful beast, and see where it leads you. With that he let go, and the foolish ass tumbled head over heels down the mountainside. They who will not listen to reason, but stubbornly go their own way, against the friendly advice of those who are wiser than they, are on the road to misfortune. The Oxen and the Wheels A pair of oxen were drawing a heavily loaded wagon along a miry country road. They had to use all their strength to pull the wagon, but they did not complain. The wheels of the wagon were of a different sort. Though the task they had to do was very light compared with that of the oxen, they creaked and groaned at every turn. The poor oxen, pulling with all their might to draw the wagon through the deep mud, had their ears filled with the loud complaining of the wheels. And this, you may well know, made their work so much the harder to endure. Silence! 
the oxen cried at last out of patience. What have you wheels to complain about so loudly? We are drawing all the weight, not you, and we are keeping still about it besides. They complain most who suffer least. Recording by Janet. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Lion and the Mouse. A lion lay asleep in the forest, his great head resting on his paws. A timid little mouse came upon him unexpectedly, and in her fright and haste to get away, ran across the lion's nose. Roused from his nap, the lion laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature to kill her. Spare me, begged the poor mouse. Please let me go and some day I will surely repay you. The lion was much amused to think that a mouse could ever help him, but he was generous and finally let the mouse go. Some days later, while stalking his prey in the forest, the lion was caught in the toils of a hunter's net. Unable to free himself, he filled the forest with his angry roaring. The mouse knew the voice and quickly found the lion struggling in the net. Running to one of the great ropes that bound him, she gnawed it until it parted, and soon the lion was free. You left when I said I would repay you, said the mouse. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. A kindness is never wasted. The Shepherd Boy and the Wolf A shepherd boy tended his master's sheep near a dark forest not far from the village. Soon he found life in the pasture very dull. All he could do to amuse himself was to talk to his dog or play on his shepherd's pipe. One day, as he sat watching the sheep and the quiet forest, and thinking what he would do should he see a wolf, he thought of a plan to amuse himself. His master had told him to call for help should a wolf attack the flock, and the villagers would drive it away. So now, though he had not seen anything that even looked like a wolf, he ran toward the village, shouting at the top of his voice, Wolf! Wolf! As he expected, the villagers who heard the cry dropped their work and ran in great excitement to the pasture. But when they got there, they found the boy doubled up with laughter at the trick he had played on them. A few days later, the shepherd boy again shouted, Wolf! Wolf! Again, the villagers ran to help him, only to be laughed at again. Then, one evening, as the sun was setting behind the forest, and the shadows were creeping out over the pasture, a wolf really did spring from the underbrush and fall upon the sheep. In terror, the boy ran toward the village, shouting, Wolf! Wolf! But, though the villagers heard the cry, they did not run to help him as they had before. He cannot fool us again, they said. The wolf killed a great many of the boy's sheep and then slipped away into the forest. Liars are not believed, even when they speak the truth. The Gnat and the Bull A gnat flew over the meadow with much buzzing for so small a creature and settled on the tip of one of the horns of a bull. After he had rested a short time, he made ready to fly away. But before he left, he begged the bull's pardon for having used his horn for a resting place. You must be very glad to have me go now, he said. It's all the same to me, replied the bull. I did not even know you were there. 
we are often of greater importance in our own eyes than in the eyes of our neighbor. The smaller the mind, the greater the conceit. The Plane Tree Two travelers, walking in the noonday sun, sought the shade of a wide-spreading tree to rest. As they lay looking up among the pleasant leaves, they saw that it was a plane tree. How useless is the plane, said one of them. It bears no fruit whatever and only serves to litter the ground with leaves. Ungrateful creatures, said a voice from the plane tree. You lie here in my cooling shade, and yet you say I am useless. Thus, ungratefully, O Jupiter, do men receive their blessings. Our best blessings are often the least appreciated. Recording by Jill Ingle. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Farmer and the Stork. A stork of a very simple and trusty nature had been asked by a gay party of cranes to visit a field that had been newly planted. But the party ended dismally with all the birds entangled in the meshes of the farmer's net. The stork begged the farmer to spare him. Please let me go, he pleaded. I belong to the stork family, who you know are honest and birds of good character. Besides, I did not know the cranes were going to steal. You may be a very good bird, answered the farmer, but I caught you with the thieving cranes, and you will have to share the same punishment with them. You are judged by the company you keep. The Sheep and the Pig One day a shepherd discovered a fat pig in the meadow where his sheep were pastured. He very quickly captured the porker, which squealed at the top of its voice the moment the shepherd laid his hands on it. You would have thought, to hear the loud squealing, that the pig was being cruelly hurt. But in spite of its squeals and struggles to escape, the shepherd tucked his prize under his arm and started off to the butchers in the marketplace. The sheep in the pasture were much astonished and amused at the pig's behavior, and followed the shepherd and his charge to the pasture gate. "'What makes you squeal like that?' asked one of the sheep. "'The shepherd often catches and carries off one of us, but we should feel very much ashamed to make such a terrible fuss about it like you do.' "'That is all very well,' replied the pig with a squeal and a frantic kick. "'When he catches you, he is only after your wool, but he wants my bacon. "'It is easy to be brave when there is no danger.'" The Travelers and the Purse Two men were traveling in company along the road when one of them picked up a well-filled purse. "'How lucky I am,' he said. "'I have found a purse.'" Judging by its weight, it must be full of gold. Do not say, I have found a purse, said his companion. Say, rather, we have found a purse, and how lucky we are. Travelers ought to share alike the fortunes and misfortunes of the road. No, no, replied the other angrily. I found it, and I am going to keep it. Just then, they heard a shout of, Stop, thief! and looking around saw a mob of people armed with clubs coming down the road. The man who had found the purse fell into a panic. We are lost if they find the purse on us, he cried. No, no, replied the other. You would not say we before, so now stick to your eye. Say I am lost. We cannot expect anyone to share our misfortunes unless we are willing to share our good fortune also. The Lion and the Ass one day, as the lion walked proudly down a forest aisle, and the animals respectfully made way for him, an ass brayed a scornful remark as he passed. The lion felt a flash of anger, but when he turned his head and saw who had spoken, he walked quietly on. He would not honor the fool with so much as a stroke of his claws. Do not resent the remarks of a fool. Ignore them.
Like, dislike, share, comment, subscribe, or the dog dip it!